Hi everybody, welcome back to the Claremont Classic Garage. You won't believe what I've gotten myself into now. Well, here's today's excellent adventure. So, at a local farm auction, there was a couple of lots of old tires. One, it said there was 15 or something, and the other one, it didn't say how many. It looked like a small pile. So I said, hey, I spied a couple of things in the piles that, that caught my attention. There was a couple of aluminum wheels. I know they're worth money at the scrapyard. There was one big tractor tire, which, uh, you know, that's good to make a rhubarb patch or something. And I did see two or three old transport truck tires on split rims, which are great for making um, fire pits out of, right? I've been in the market for one or two of them. So I thought, hey, what the heck, I'll throw in my bids. Well, I got them both, $2 each. And what do you know, when I got there, there was actually 75 tires. Oh, brother. Lucky it wasn't too far from home. It took two loads with the truck and trailer to bring it all home. <laughs> Unreal. So I've got a little bit of work to do now sorting this out. It's not as bad as it looks. Um, a lot of these tires, believe it or not... Um, I'm going to offer up to the local demo derby guys because they're always looking for them. And some of them will scrap. Some of them will take to the dump. Some of them I might be able to sell off. I, I did find a couple of decent looking pairs of big truck tires in there. And, uh, oh well. <laughs> what are you going to do? Fun times. We started the per preliminary sorting. Uh, they're mostly truck tires, so in the middle I've got a big pile of 16-inch uh, um, truck tires that I'm hoping the guys that Derby pickup trucks and Suburbans will want. Uh, they'll be going for free. Um, I've got here is the last few that I'm going to have to peel them off the rims. I've got a bunch there that are on uh, implement rims or tractor rims. I actually found one. Um, not this one. I think, um, this one pretty cool. It's on a, it's on a 340 duster wheel that I can sell, uh, quite easily, or maybe I'll just keep it seeing as how I've got a few 340 cars around here. Um, and these are my rig tires. I'm not sure what I'm going to do to get rid of those, but, um, hopefully somebody will want them. Uh, here's a pile of, this is starting. These are the old school LT bias ply tires. The Derby guys like those. Um, this one I'm sure we can rehome. I've got here a set of four of 17 and a half inch heavy duty trailer tires. Might be handy for the demo Derby guys too. And here's a set of four matching Goodyear tires. So we're doing okay. And out of it all, I managed to find two tires for me. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go down to the shop and start breaking some of these things down. Well, that's looking a lot better. Now, I've got the transport truck wheels to deal with. Uh, they're next. I've got to get the rims off of a few of them to make my fire rings. And then I'll have to uh, figure out what i got to do to get rid of these. Uh, you never know. People might want them. God knows. They'll be free to whoever wants them. And then um, in here, these are mostly scrap. This set of four is good, and that single is good. That one's good. So we'll see if we can rehome these. I was able to build up a pair of uh, 670 by 15 implement tires on good wheels, so we can rehome those. And in all of it, I'll show you what I found. I almost bought a brand new pair of front wheels for this here 8N because I didn't have any. I was missing the front wheels, but um, in all those pile of tires, I managed to find these two. They're an exact matching pair. They're not exactly perfectly correct for this as... The ones for this should have the four depressed holes for the for the wheel weights, but I'm not too worried about that. They'll look pretty nice when they're sandblasted and painted. I saved 250 bucks, and I'm a happy guy. We've dealt with most of the small tires. I've got a few left to take to the, the dump. Lucky in the, the modern times, you, we can actually take 10 tires a day to the dump for free, so um, that's helped me clean up a lot of this. Now we're down to these. Now, you can see that one there. I've gotten it apart already. There's one fire ring. So these old split rims, 
there's stuff you need to know about these things. These things are dangerous. They kill people. So, um, before you start messing around with these things, beating and banging on them, it's 100% imperative that we take a few steps. Number one, they're heavy. Safety shoes. Number two, there's compressed air possibly stuff can fly safety glasses and get some gloves and you might need some headphones um, anyway the first thing we want to do is make 100 percent there is no air in this thing because th this this thing if it comes apart under pressure it'll fire a man 40 feet in the air they're they're deadly so um the valve stem i just sawed it off with the with the grinder and you can see it's packed with crud. So is that crud holding air behind in there? We don't know. So we get the old cordless drill and you can go right down through there. There we go. Well, there ain't no air in that. So if this was an actual back in the day split rim and it was, you know, on a truck driving around on the road and you had to get this off, these things were really easy to, to work on. All you would do is, um, first thing you do is break the bead on this side. Just break the bead or, or just, you know, get it separate. And they would, there's this proper hammer that, that's got a, a pointed end on it. I used to do these when I was an apprentice, like over 30 years ago. And I can't really remember how, and nobody has the tools anymore. And then you get to this side and you would knock the bead down and then you would knock this ring down and pop out the, the lock ring and then it would just all come apart. But when these things have been sitting around on farms for 40 years, well, they don't exactly come apart that easy because the, the rust, the rust gets in, it swells. Um, you can see here how it goes together, right? Um, the rust, look at that. It gets in there and it swells. That's where the tire was touching it. And that's where it was touching the rim. So it, it, it like grows in there and it, it becomes uh, almost like a super press fit. And it's really hard to get them apart. A lot of beating and banging and you don't really get anywhere. So it's not like we're trying to save these tires. So you can see here, I've just, I've just sawzalled it. So we've got a good, um, like a demolition blade in the saw. A pretty coarse, pretty coarse blade. And we're just going to go around and cut the tire. Now this one will probably be a little work to cut because it's a, it's a, it's a logging, it's a logging tire, and the sidewall is probably this thick. So um, we'll see what happens. Might be a little work to get this guy off, but we've come this far, haven't we? Let me get it started here. There we go. Got this side cut, now we'll flip it over and cut the other side. So once we've cut around the bead on both sides, then we're going to make one slice all the way around. Now, keep in mind these things are old and these are biased tires. You wouldn't be doing this with steel belted radials. You'd be in a world, <laughs> a world of hurt. You'd have to do it with a cut off wheel or something. But um, these old corded uh, bias tires it's easy to do now this one is 12 ply she's a real thick tire so I might have to actually cut it both sides and take it off like that but we'll see what happens so first thing we do is get on the sidewall here there we go. and get it started and we go down across the tread sidewall <laughs> and it looks like it'll come off 
Wow. You can see how thick it is. Look at that. Thing's got to be three quarters of an inch thick. The sidewall. Logging tire. Serious off-road stuff. Uh, what's left of our inner tube here? Could come off. That's really on there. Even this is super thick. There we go. All right. Looks like we cut a piece of the liner too. Okay, now. We'll find our knife and we'll get the liner off. See all that crap in there? That's what holds it all together and makes it not want to come apart. So, brings us to our next step. We could beat and bang on this till we're blue in the face to try and get this bead um, removed. But the easiest thing to do is to get a four and a half inch grinder with a cutoff wheel and get down in there and cut the, this is the only steel in these tires is around the bead. So we're gonna get in there and cut that. We're gonna carefully start cutting this and the rubber, the rubber does a number on the, on the wheel. The wheel will go, get smaller and smaller. But when you get through the metal, you'll actually hear the bead go pop. And that's when you know you can get this thing off. Okay, now we need some kind of a bar or something, and we'll just start pushing this thing down. It'll start moving. See, there's still a few strands of wire in there that we couldn't reach because the, the grinding wheel just can't get into the corner of the rim. So you push it down a little bit and then you can get the rest of it and it comes right off. Alrighty. There she goes. That's just rust holding that on. Now we'll cut the last couple of strands of wire in there. And it should just, we'll knock that down out of the way. There. 
Now we got to get this apart. So you bash this down like that, and then pop this thing out. We'll loosen it up. There we go. That's pretty serious stuff. There. See all, all that scab there? It's almost a quarter of an inch thick, which makes everything grow and expand, and that's why you just can't get the bead broken like you normally would be able to. Anyway, two down, one to go. Well, there you have it. We got our, the, the great tire pile has yielded three fire rings, which is how this thing all started. That's what I, what I wanted. And in the end, we got um, our three fire rings. We got the two front wheels for our 8N. We got um, a set of four good tires that the neighbor's kid has taken. There was one big, huge tractor tire that I rehomed to some muscle men. I don't know. They throw it at each other or roll it up and down hills. I don't know what they do. I couldn't even move the thing. But these guys just picked it up and threw it in the back of a truck. Um, what else did we get out of this? There was something else I got out of this. Oh, and I managed to get a pair of, um, um, there was one wheel and tire in this, and I had a matching wheel and tire already, and I, I made a pair of, of matching implement tires. So that's not all bad for $4.98, or $5, no, it came to $5.20 for the whole uh, kit and caboodle. So that's pretty good. Now we're going to go ahead and load up the truck with our scrap tires so we can take them to the dump. And I'll see you in a minute. Behind me there is the last eight tires from the great tire pile loaded in the truck ready to go to the dump. So we're going to call this a success even though it was quite a bit of work. But um, it, it definitely bore fruit. So um, <laughs> while I'm tuckered out just lifting all them in the truck in this hot day. Um, anyway, that's it for now. Thanks for tuning in. And I hope you'll join us next time on the adventures of the Claremont Classic Garage. So long.